This panel is quite interesting because uh, uh, we will speak with an important argument uh, that touch all the components of the food design, of the food production, agriculture, and so on. And this, the greenwashing. You know what I, what I mean? The greenwashing is the tentative to generate some information, normally wrong, to convince the customer that our product, our industrialization, our system is green, is sustainable, but in reality, not. Um, you, you watch the last presentation of Pedro, and Pedro uh, made a demonstration uh, regarding the yogurt and, uh, let's say, Black, black Rose is the, the, the major financial situation of the yogurt. Then, okay, we reduce the carbon footprint in the world, but at the top of the situation, we have a finance system that generates tons of carbon and tons of pollution. Then, the yogurt is green, but all the rest of the life cycle assessment of the production chain and so on is totally ungreen. Okay, then, uh, this is the main argument of today with, uh, let's say, six uh, super components. I'm only the moderator. Uh, so I, I don't want to present myself, it's not important, but uh, every one of, uh, of the talker present yourself in uh, uh, 30 seconds. And we have a list of interesting argument, interesting, interesting question, just to declare for each sector what is green, what is not green, and the possible innovation sector by sector. Uh, take care that we have six people that operate in the six different sector of the food uh, uh, creative food, industrial food, industrialization, uh, let's say food artist, uh, food designer, um, let's say architects, uh, then the location could be green washing or not. Okay, then let's start uh, with Yashan. Yashan, if you want to present yourself. Yes, hi, I'm Yashan Sippi. I'm a food architect and founder of Sugar and Space. Our goal is to work on different creative projects with food and transform the way consumers perceive their food um, every day. Besides that, I'm co-founder of Food Design Nation and I'm director at the online school of food design. Hola a todos, and <laughs> I'm in Belgium at the moment. Nice to be here. Okay, that's Caroline. Hello, nice to meet you all. I'm Caroline Hopkinson. I'm a behavioral anthropologist and a food artist. I am fascinated by the senses. I work a lot with sound and using sound to map the terroir and the, the origins of certain foods. And I think it's really powerful, but I think the application of using the senses, especially sound these days, whether QR codes or Bluetooth is a really exciting new way um, forward when it comes to green issues. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, next, Eloise. Hi. Um, well, thank you very much for inviting me today. I'm Eloise Villaseca. I've been working for the last 20 years in the food gastronomy scene, working in, uh, in the, the Alicia Foundation in Spain, and then for 10 years in the Seller de Can Roca at the R&D manager. And I'm starting a new, new projects right now. But uh, I'm a food lover, as you can imagine. Um, my, my, my best key point is I, I know how to eat. And I think eating is the w first step of, of being a food designer. And I, I, also, um, I am also uh, a teacher and uh, an educational lover in, in many areas, from very uh, small kids to university. Because I think education is uh, the a key point through how we could uh, fight again greenwashing. Okay, thank you, um, Francesca. I don't, I don't watch you, but uh, I hope that you're connected. No, 
she was missing. <laughs> okay, Jasper, you're connected because I I watch I'm watching you. <laughs> okay, so, so my name is Jasper Katen. I'm a founder of Creative Chef Studio, and um, uh, I call myself a food artist. And what I would like to do in life is to tell stories uh, through my food, and I use not only the food itself, but I also create the environment around it using smell, sound, visuals, craftsmanship. Um, and I, I show those works in museums, galleries, uh, universities. Uh, and what I like to do most is uh, to do it uh, in schools for kids um, who can be inspired because I believe they are the future who can help us. And that's basically in short what I do, but it's a lot. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember your uh, performance. I don't know, in 2021 or 22, in uh, Milan Design Week. I was there. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. And last but not least, the younger Giovanni. Hello, everyone. I'm Giovanni. I'm from Bari, south of Italy, and I'm a chef and product design designer. Uh, I'm very specific, very mm, dedicated to uh, the food design area. Uh, more specific of design for food. Uh, I'm trying to combine the, my two passions related to food and the product design. Okay, and Francesca, she's arrived. Okay, Francesca, if you want to present yourself in the, in the short time. I hi. <laughs> yes, yes, hi everybody. I'm Dr. Francesca Tompollo. Um, I'm the founder of the online school of food design and I've been doing a bunch of things over the last 20 years around food design and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm Antonio's friend and number one fan, mm. so hello everybody. And I remember that uh, we, we watched the last year here. Uh, okay, then, very heter heterogeneous people, okay, with a, a lot of word of competencies, then. And this is important because we established uh, a different views of the same problem. And different views is a good comparison between mind and mind, uh, work and work, and experience and experience. All this, theoretically, in my opinion, will solve the problem. And now we enter deeply in the different argument with a series of questions. Uh, Yashan, you are the first. Uh, we yeah. know, okay, we know that in many areas of architecture and design, as is your job, the term greenwashing is misused, uh, and the client understands that that is it's not correct. Uh, react negatively because it's not stupid. Obviously, um, there is a system to communicate the, the real system sustainability to everyone and. Uh, uh, if everyone understand uh, the right term that is not greenwashing, not green, uh, more sustainable. Yeah, thank you, Giorgio. So I think the bonus of working with architecture, just like with food, is that it's experiential, right? So there's nothing like taking a potential buyer into a newly constructed green building that has been made with passive cooling techniques, for example, and letting them experience and live what that means and how it feels on their body. And then also sort of showing them or demonstrating how the passive cooling will reduce their monthly energy bills when they move into a house, right? The problem with Sustainability in general, just like food design, is that it's an umbrella term. It doesn't have a very clear definition and therefore it's sort of misunderstood and misused. So whether that's a green label on a food package or that's a LEED or BRIAM certification on a green building, these labels and tags are sort of used in marketing and in communication of products or projects. And what that ends up, what ends up happening is greenwashing, right? It's made to be, made to seem to be more sustainable than it actually is. Sometimes that's unconscious. Very often that is conscious. But 
what we can do is now realistically we can't bring every stakeholder into a building to experience what a passively cooled building is we can't take every buyer into a field to show them um where the you know origins of the produce of their food is coming from but what we can do is embody sort of transparency and use tools like social media which are very accessible um and show people the entire supply chain or value chain um to showcase to them what that sustainability actually means because one way of doing that is with the ESGs you can't really be have all elements under control so any company or building project that's claiming to be perfect is obviously not and the ones who are sort of doing best in terms of the transparency of sustainability reporting are the ones that are realistic about where they lie so i think transparency is key for communication and you can use tools like social media uh and another questions for the mom um when we enter in a location okay or we enter in an in in a, in, in a dedicated zone there is a system to create a wow effect in term of sustainability in term of good green project in your opinion yeah so i think there's sort of this race now to be carbon neutral and to have those kinds of net zero building projects and net zero cities so you're seeing more projects come up that are using sort of mud bricks um earthen and clay construction techniques um and sort of passive cooling techniques as i mentioned but so i'm scheduled to actually visit a project in belgium next week which is called casa umu which is a breathable eco home designed by an artist and designer called sven bullard and basically he's working on now using that technique to develop a, an entire eco village in ghana um but sort of unfortunately right now it isn't illegal to green wash there are still not clear enough laws that prevent building projects or food packaging to make these claims but the good news is that so the csrd which is the european reporting directive is making this mandatory for companies of a certain size to actually report an overview of their value chain when it comes to having these sustainability claims and part of the um, european green deal is the green claims directive which will make it mandatory for companies of all sizes to report or have sort of receipts and evidence of any claims that they're making for sustainability which should come about in the next year or two um and that's going to have a financial impact on the revenue of the company you're going to be fined up to 4% of your annual revenue if you make claims and cannot back these claims up so you can no longer just let's say have a green wall on your building or have yeah uh, <laughs> i hope <laughs> um and call it green if you've sort of uh, eroded an entire let's say forest land to make that development so whether it's food or construction we have to know and we're talking to designers here at this festival we, we need to sort of work hard to demonstrate that the design phase is actually the most valuable stage of a product's life cycle because that's the stage where we choose materials and we choose materials yeah. which then determine the upstream value as well as the downstream value of the product so from the materials you use making it the product durable to the downstream value in terms of recycling right so it's good that there's laws coming up it makes the companies liable because the minute there's cash companies care um but unfortunately for consumers right now i would say the best thing that we can do is try to educate ourselves and try to be as conscious as possible because if a company is truly sustainable right now they will do hard work to track it and if they are doing all the work to track it they will publish a sustainability report so if you find a sustainability report for a product that you're buying that's one way right now to know that they're actually sustainable okay thanks so much caroline following the the answer of yashan in your experience has behavioral um, anthropologist and a scholar of food and human relation 
you will have witnessed the hyper-industrialization of food over time. Uh, does the consumer current have the ability to understand what is natural and what is processed and unhealthy? And uh, if there is a, let's say, information methodology, labels, uh, I don't know, package, different packaging, and so on, to have the right concept in the normal in the first seven seconds that the people decide which product buy or not. I think it is really interesting because uh, the, the agency of what we have has been so muddled up because for the last five or six decades, we've been told by big hyper-industrialization to buy certain products and it had an inherent knowledge loss as well with it. That 70 years ago, but it's not such a long time if you look at the big evolution of human cooking. But in the last 70 years, we had hyper-industrialization, monocultures, and the way that, that food is processed. And I think it's really interesting how we've been sold the idea that we have to graze and snack constantly. And then it's something that you just open and it's just so clean and it has to be hyper-hygienic. And then we buy really complicated fermented foods in, in, in kombucha. So it's really, it's a paradox. So I think education is very interesting, but I think education has to be done and, and, and bridging that knowledge goes like there is, that loss has to be bridged in a different way because when it comes to food, food is so personal and sensible to, towards everyone. It's who we are and it, it captures our identity. But then we have sustainability. It's the rational idea. And everyone always try to kind of have a healthier food for us from personal thing, not just sustainable. It's very hard to make those choices and differentiate between what I'm ought to eat because it's good for the environment and what I really like. Because my food choices are guided by the irrational part of our brand. It's not guided by the cortex. It's, it's hedonistic. It's very impulsive. And that's beautiful. So I think there's a lot of scope for food designers to bring the what you called earlier the wow effect but as well the joy factor back into the agency and those decision makings. It's not like, oh, I ought to buy this chocolate because it's better, because actually in the moment, we don't care. Like all of us would have had a Snickers or something like this, and we know it's awful if the peanuts are produced and there's palm oil. So I think it's a really interesting um, judge, and I think it is the re-education and taking time, especially when it comes to performative food art, it's a really important, um, um, like a knowledge gap, like these are modules we all have as designers. And I think governments really underestimate how food design and the change in behavior is, uh, we have a fabulous uh, opportunity there. Okay. Uh, I spoke last week with uh, Stanford University, the, the, the section of uh, healthy food. And someone said, less ingredient in the label, more quality and less hyper-industrialization. Uh, seems good or not? No I think thing. absolutely, because um, uh, most people don't know how to read the label. They, they obviously are so um, very forcefully written in a way that it's really hard to understand. And I think it is really interesting. I think it's just the idea of an education and in, in, in actually declaring what is inside and what certain elements are and the origins of, of it as well. I think it would be interesting because nowadays you could have a QR code, not just a, a list of things which takes you straight to the origin. So mm -hmm. we can involve much more definition on packaging as well because usually it's, it's in a font size none of us can read. It's font size five and it's all very small. But I think make, and I think once, once um, the industry knows that consumers have an agency and question about it, you will be cancelled if you're actually producing or you're lying about the origin of the ingredients. Okay, thank you. Eloise, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, information and food education are fundamental elements for a correct diet. Okay, I remember the, uh, let's say, uh, anti-junk food campaign of the uh, Obama administration uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, elementary school. Greenwashing is, is now prevalent in the world of communication. Uh, how can we inform the consumer cons consistently and truthfully? Can we are convincing, can we convince the people that it's really starting from the, the babies, 
then with the new, uh, let's say, child elements of communication? Well, I think um, it's already been a little bit answered by Carolina, but, th but I will say that something is key, which is, sustainable is sustainability is a path. And Corey runs it the way. And we've seen that with the former example of the, of the, the yogurt brand mm. who has a lack of coherence. And the way that people can understand a brand or can understand a product is to have, understand the whole story about it. And the, the, the work that has to be done by, uh, by the brand itself, by, uh, by the producer, by, by the producer, uh, is um, to make it as transparent as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% sustainable. As we say, it's a pass. It is difficult to reach 100% sustainable. But he has to be coherent in his conversation to the public. He has to reach through the different senses. The way we learn is not only one way, and it's not only one sense. I'm visual. Maybe Giovanni is, is hey. tactile. So we need to learn and understand how the, the consumer get the information. And we have a very wide, wide of consumer, and we have to understand who is the consumer, not in terms of who is my target, but who is my collaborator in this pass, and try to speak this language. Labels are so complicated. Yeah. I'm food engineer. I have a, a master degree in whatever, chemi food, whatever, I don't care. I just don't understand the labeling. I still spend a lot of time looking at information, clear information. And I don't know that who is uh, building uh, this governance about labeling, but there is a play uh, and there is a very interesting game to play in that sense between the citizen, the governance, and also in a way, the kids, the, no, the one that who will be the next one to des decidate, that they will have to get something to, to tell about it. What is able to get to understand by a kid, it's easier. If a kid understands it, maybe an adult can do. So let's try to design for the future and to design with, with uh, transparency and coherence. Yes, I completely agree. Uh, just an example, uh, 10 years ago, I made a study from Politecnico di Milano and uh, uh, Minister de la Santé and, and, uh, in Paris for the, the elderly design or ancient design mm -hmm. regarding the label, uh, regarding the information of the label, uh, regarding the problem of health and the problem of use, the dimension of characters, the, the, the comprehension of, uh, of a name, result, and so on. After 10 years, no one applied the minimum result of this study. And I don't know why, honestly. We have, a, let's say, um, idea for the future or not? Or we pray the food industry to in increase the label or, uh, or uh, change the dimension or I don't know. There was a very smart intervention this morning. We were talking about we always look at one type of clients, but no, we, we are focusing on one kind of clients, which is um, the trendy one, the maybe uh, the one who has the most possibility to pay for uh, your product, and we are not inclusive. There is a lack of inclusivity yeah. in the way we design product and the way we design service, and, and in part of currents. I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but mm -hmm. the thing, I have to add inclusiveness yeah. in, in what we have to design for the, for the next step. Uh, uh, in the last, uh, just, just to touch this argument, in the last um, festival, I spoke with the, the inclusive kitchen that it's absolutely fundamental. Oh, um, Francesca, she's, she's missing another time. Okay, Jasper. Another different argument that's touch the art and the wow effect. Okay. Uh, because I remember your um, artwork in Milan. Uh, then was 
I don't remember. It's not vegetarian people, is uh, future something. I don't remember <laughs> the right name of it was was uh, particularly interesting. But I would like to talk about you with food marketing and communication, especially the artistic communication. Uh, the information about the sustainability and the, the environment is very difficult to understand. There is a method to convince the consumer uh, through the artistic passage or art impressive message uh, to generate a record, to generate a remember uh, situation, to generate something that remain impressed in the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's one of the most beautiful things of food. So, so I think what you were talking about is the what I did in Milan is is, is connected with this 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 question. It's it was called the futuritarian futuritarian, right? Yes. <laughs> And it's uh, it's a term I, I, I like to use because it's not it's about the thing that a lot of stories that are out there about food or, or about which way to go. Yeah? Uh, also, the greenwash stories is all about we are right and you are wrong, and it has to be like this. So I was thinking uh, maybe we we need a, a term a, a, a word that that's that's. Binds us together, so we can create a collective story together towards a better future. So I thought, well, futuritarian is like a a name that's like, okay, yeah. I'm proud to be futuritarian. It doesn't matter what your vision at this point is. Uh, we all have one goal: make the world a better place and change the food system. So I'm proud to be futuritarian. And in regards to your question, I think. Those kinds of terms is also connected with the vision of all the old marketing uh, systems that are out there are about the product of a company sending to the customer, this is what you need to know about a product you have to eat it. But nowadays, there's a, a big change uh, going on that people um, are brands themselves. So they also are used to send stuff out there. So they know how it works. And they... Uh, that they form their own brands around themselves and it's, 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 it's outdated to send those stories towards the customer. Um, it doesn't enter the mind anymore. And I think it's very interesting to find a way to connect um, the, the customer with the stories that are out there. So they have to become part of the story, not the, the, the receiver of the story. Um, I think that's a pretty hard thing to do. Uh, so I, I do it now uh, using the futuritarian term and do it and give kids uh, lessons in the classroom. But maybe we can um, find out a way to um, use art, use technology, use um, uh, uh, education, etc., to uh, to yeah to say to people and to, to learn them that they have an opinion too, but that we have to think together collectively towards a better future. And I think that message is the message that can be <laughs> entered in people using immersive um, stuff like art installations, um, because those things make memories. The memories are yeah. who you are as a person. Um, so that's a long uh, thing, but I think... We can do it, but it's hard. Uh, another, I put on the table another provocative question, uh, Jasper. Uh, after the COVID-19, the futuritarian is valid or not? Uh, is or we will adapt to the new situation? Why? Because you, <laughs> it's a provocative, but it's, uh, let's say, because we change our mentality. This is uh, is certified and uh, uh, we react in a different way in front of a uh, of food uh, and our seven seconds to decide something are changed or changed our mentality because uh, we enter in, in, in a new dimension of self protect people yeah. and uh, we will engage in a different way or we reply uh, in the same way the the, the new art uh, events 
Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a, <laughs> it's hard. That's yeah. a big risk. Yeah. Well, also in this, there is no truth. Or there, there's no. This is how the situation is. So I, I, I think. So what? There's one thing that I know that that using art, using communication, using uh, the things we have now is important to get messages across to people who will take them to them and uh, do something with it. So we go and make the world a better place. That's why we are talking right here at this moment with each other, because we all heard stories. We, we know everything about sustainability, etc. but not if it's true or, or if it's good or if it's bad, but we are now here. That's an important thing. I think art can do that. Education can do that, but also maybe things that are now really big and we are not quite thinking about. I have little kids and they like to do gaming. Maybe we should think about also those kinds of platforms using games, other ways mm -hmm. to communicate. Um, so we can become more <laughs> collectively engaged with each other again. Um, yeah, and I think the most important thing Caroline also told is um, yeah, using all these things we have not only in the institution where it's meant to be, like art should be in a museum. No, art can be used everywhere um, and put it into the classroom, uh, telling kids the, the stories. And um, yeah, I th yeah. Okay. there is no answer about no, this. No, no, it, it, it was provocative <laughs> just, to be, uh, just to have, uh, let's say, no answer, obviously. Otherwise, we solve the yeah. problem. Okay, Giovanni. Yes. The younger, uh, you are relatively new in this world. We are contaminated uh, mm -hmm. for the food and so on, but you are new, you are pure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm interested to your point of view uh, because it's important, and your perception of uh, not the greenwashing because we declare the greenwashing, but the quality of the food. You are not engaged 100% uh, of the hours day by day in this world, and you have the possibility to uh, view on the lateral side this world. What is your perception? I use uh, my, uh, Giovanni was my uh, magistral or master degree student. Um, well, it's a huge question as well. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> The perception of food nowadays, I think, is uh, very difficult to uh, to say because uh, it mm, in involves many uh, many fields in from different perspectives, from psychological, from economics, from politics, uh, from design as well. Uh, from my perspective, uh, even if I'm very young, uh, mm, I, what I'm trying to do and what I'm Mm, probably is my perspective now, my point of view is um, that mm, probably we don't have the real respect, respect that uh, food needs and I think that uh, we need to uh, consider more the food itself, not, uh, I mean, the organic food, I mean, yes, but the whole system around it because uh, food is something that uh, is a part of our DNA in some way and we build up, we, uh, we grow with food, uh, considering our history. And um, so sometimes we um, probably think too much to um, other things, the uh, art things, so political and economics. And, and we didn't uh, um, spend too much time to understand uh, what is the value of food and what is the the purchase, I mean, the goal of food in some way. I don't know if I answer because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very important because obviously the uncontamination is obliged to generate something mm -hmm. new. Normally, the innovation derived for an uncontaminated people that have a different system, a different view on the, let's say, blocked system as the food. Uh, uh, if I can... Uh, for example, in my university in Milan, we did a, a project for um, a market, temporary market in Milan. And in that case, we focus more on the, mm, the food system itself, 
and to, to respect more the, the full life, the, the life of vendors, the life of uh, final clients. Uh, and then we had the problem of politics and economics, of course. Okay. But probably it's better sometimes to <laughs> focus more on the, the gold. Francesca, are you okay? Yes. Probably. Yes. <laughs> yes, really. Okay. Francesca, uh, I have a problem because I <laughs> learned two years online uh, and it was dramatic, honestly. And I, in, in, in this way, I said, uh, in your daily work and the teaching, you, you have a, a relationship with uh, let's say many people all over the world. Okay, how this information about the ecosystem and sustainability is switchable online and is perceived uh, with the non-resident people, with the people to other world and with the people to other culture and the people to other religion, let's say, uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> I wish that I had the whole knowledge of the whole world to give you this <laughs> answer. <laughs> But <laughs> I, I will give you, of course, uh, what I see from my perspective and, you know, what I, as you said, on what I do, based on what I do daily and the people that I meet daily. Um, it's, of, of course, as has been mentioned already, there's a lot of confusion on what the term, a term like sustainability means, which is the term that I like to use the most. Um, be, first of all, because as it was mentioned, it's a, it, a sustainability, it's at least a threefold um, concept. Uh, with, when we say the word <laughs> exactly, Jashan, <laughs> it could be four and it's about to be uh, five in my book also. Um, when, we talk, when we use the word sustainability, we are implying that we are talking about environmental sustainability, social sustainability and economic sustainability at least. And most people use this, the word sustainability only um, referring to environmental sustainability. And, and so this is already kind of a considerable problem uh, if, if we think about you know, how we operate, communicating on assumptions, on, the, on understanding each other's words and the meaning of those words. Um, I mostly talk and, and, and have, uh, have uh, interactions with designers and, uh, you know, maybe people who work in different positions in companies or institutions uh, more than, you know, the consumers, consumer side. And in this space, even, <laughs> of course, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of confusion. Um, so, I think that uh, one thing that we can do to maybe try and remember what it is that we are talking about, and one thing that we should have the responsibility of doing since we are as designers, startups, managers, whatever you are, as somebody who is bringing something new into the world to give yourself whatever word you, wa you want, one thing that we can do and we, that we have the responsibility of doing is maybe... Um, Going back to the actual meaning of the word sustainability, the abilities to sustain. Mm -mm. Right. So if we talk about environmental sustainability, does this product have the ability of sustaining the physical, natural environment in which it's built? Does this product has the ability to sustain the people who make it and the people who use it? As designers, the, the, the responsibility here is to, to only act and make choices throughout the design process, throughout the creating pro creative process, which is nothing than a series of choices, that all answer yes to that word. Is this sustainable? Can this sustain the environment in, in, in which it is? manufactured and sold and used is this sustainable can does this product has the ability of sustaining life human life and other uh, living beings uh, life uh, in this environment etc um, if we made those choices just answering 
asking ourselves and answering this question, the world would be already a, a better place. Um, but the problem is that we uh, use data that come from uh, governing bodies that tell us how bad, let's say, for example, greenwashing is. And, uh, and uh, we should probably take more time. Um, and this is excru excruciatingly painful and time consuming to go beyond those governing bodies and go to the data themselves. Because we have a governing body like the ESG rating, uh, for example, Environment Social Governance yeah. Rating, that is supposed to rate uh, companies based on you know, how well they do. So uh, McDonald was at uh, 1B. So the rating goes from D to triple A. So McDonald was at a, B, 1B. And then in 2018, it emitted 540 million tons of CO2, 7% more than the previous year. <laughs> yes. And somehow it got to double B. Okay. And then if we're going to finance, we have JP Morgan, which invested 317 billions in fossil fuels, and it got an A. Yeah. So if we think about this and the world where we live in, if you think about any label that any governing bodies might put on your company or on your product, um, it feels to me like it's time for design to get political. Really, yeah. so. Yeah, and because I, I remember that. Design. Yeah, because I remember that. Uh, uh, not all the the the, the country in the world uh, subscribe the Kigali and the Kyoto Protocol. This is one of the examples. No? So I don't know what design can do, but I know what I can do, what you can do, what Caroline can do, Jasper, Jashan. Uh, 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 Giovanni, mm. uh, Heloise, and anybody else listening right now can do. We can take the responsibility to make choices that align to what I think is the fourth corner of sustainability, which is spiritual sustainability. In other words, for every choice, every creative choice that I make through my, my design process, from what is my brief, um, or creative choice or answer to any question in the design brief from what is my design process, from what is my brief to what should be the color, what should be the material, what should be the font, what should be any question. If we make these questions, if we make this, if we answer all of these questions, making sure that the answer aligns to what type of person you want to be, and what type of human being you want to be, the two pillars, I think, of what is our spiritual journey as human beings, you know, what type of human being do I want to be? Everybody is going through a spiritual journey. Then we are aligning our purpose as human beings, our responsibility as designers to a bigger concept of sustainability of the product or service or whatever we are working on. Mm -hmm. Can this thing that I'm designing sustain does it have the ability to sustain my being here on planet Earth? Or am I working for a company, let's say, for example, Nestle, that greenwashes itself so well on social sustainability? I was literally a couple of uh, weeks ago on a conference with a guy from Nestle. They were talking about food systems. And they were talking about all of the things that they, uh, the wonderful things that they are doing. And the wonderful thing that they are doing turned out to be to give money to smaller local company they, who they are working on basically food sovereignty. And that was their greenwashing. We keep yeah, doing what they're exactly. doing, which is money. But yeah. in the meantime, we give, uh, we give money to someone else who is then going to work on food sovereignty. So... Um, yeah, greenwashing, uh, because it touches also sustainability, then it touches all three corners of sustainability. And uh, I think that we just have the responsibility of making sure that what we do, every single design action that we take aligns to our spiritual journey. That's a word to call it, or, you know, who are you and what do you want to do here? Okay, perfect. Then, uh, second turn of uh, question, but... Please, small answer because uh, 
others why someone killed me because we lost many times. Okay. Uh, Yashan, uh, the engagement of the people. Okay, then you imagine a location, you imagine a, a, a wonderful location, a building, a architecture, and so on. Then the people pass on the ale, and we. What is the system to demonstrate that this location is perfect, is sustainable, is able to sustain, as mentioned by Francesca, okay, to sustain the, let's say, the energy consumption, to sustain the, 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 the solar panel and so on, and a system to engagement to the people to enter in this location and use this location. Yeah, so I think, as I mentioned, the beauty is it's experiential, right? So there's no way that you can take away what the consumer, and I like to use the word consumer for architecture or for food, what the consumer feels and experiences when they're at this location, right? The issue is that we tend to, again, whether it's architecture or food, enter that building or buy the product at the end of its development stage and at the beginning of its usage, right? And there's no way for us to truly know, except for these kinds of um, reports, or like I said, um, well-documented processes of making, um, what the history and what the sort of yeah process of it coming up to here is. Um, so I think using sort of, like Caroline and Jasper have said also, the whole sensory aspect, um, of things when people are in a building is a great way to help them remember it because like Heloise said, we're not all sort of visual learners. You may be kind of, you may be tactile, you may be sort of olfactory, etc. So I think using the senses and then supplementing that with the kind of evidence and documentation, and these are all soft things. But at the end of the day, like I said, we have to demonstrate to them if this sustainable building or sustainable product is coming to you at a more expensive cost upfront, what are the long-term benefits, for example, in terms of energy bills going down for having those solar panels? What are those long-term benefits that are going to make a difference? Because at the end of the day, the consumer is also price sensitive. So I think you have to back it up with sort of three sides to the story. Okay, thank you so much. Caroline. <laughs> Different situation or oh, uh, connected to, to the building because uh, the space and the food are, are uh, strictly connected. Uh, in, in, since 2021, uh, from today, uh, the COVID entered in our, let's say, life and so on. Uh, I, I read many, many times that the, the people change the mind uh, to protect. Uh, uh, themselves to to increase the food safety and the necessity to live in a, in a, in a in a safety in a safety location in a safety world. Today, in in an anthro anthropological way, the concept is inside or was in a temporary way and passed through. I think that's, I think COVID was nothing temporal and it's really interesting that how it changed the ways we were thinking and it's non, it's, it, I think it's without, it's not reversible. I think whatever happened in COVID, it's not easily reversed. And I think it led to a lot of a high, like hyper awakening from people. People had the hygiene. I think that is temporal, but I think when it comes down to it, they had a sensory awakening that um, which is interesting, and I think I spoke with Yasha, and we had a really interesting uh, research project. The sale of a scented candle went went through the roof. People really were craving in COVID different senses in order to mark the day, like punctuations, like the idea of the beginning, middle, and end. How we use food and we use the senses and different different items for that. So I think it's really interesting when it comes down to it. Um, the the idea. Of, so I think it is. Um, Irreversible, but I think it's really interesting how when it comes to sourdough baking during COVID, 
everyone makes their own kombucha, like the fermentation. I think it is, it gave people agency to, to be really part of, it, of the process of making foods. And I think it's really interesting to capture that as well and not just go back to our old ways. The idea that I can make three sourdough breads and I can share it and people have this really nice little mini micro like trading organism. And I think that is really fabulous, interesting um, thinking in there. I think it is really interesting to bring it back um, and, and, and kind of like use social media in order to do this. And I think a lot of restaurants do this and a lot of local bakeries do that. We have five loaves too many come and pick them up. So it's fabulous for food waste on a big thing. Okay, okay, I just want okay. to add a thing to, one second, to Francesca, because I thought what she said was spirituality is so important. And I think it's mindfulness as well, because it is, with it, when it comes to greenwashing, it's very much about, we still live in a Judeo-Christian worldview of the middle medieval times that I am naughty, and then I can pay a third person to, to like, obliviate me for my sins. So it is a bit like some sort of weird Catholic monastery in the 16th century. So that's what Nestle does. They pay a third party and then they sin and they do this. And I think it's really important that we call, like, but we live in 2023, but weirdly when it comes to sin and offsetting and greenwashing, we're very much in the Middle Ages. And I think it is very important for consumers to bring it now. I can't, I can't be bad to someone i can't be rude and then say later on i'll just pay you 10 pounds this is not going to interact or i gotta buy you a plant afterwards yes maybe that works but not three times in a row and you can't do that with friendships but you can't do that as a big brand okay thank you so much uh then we will apply the um, the jasper arts to to review the building <laughs> to, have, to have a a perfect system, a perfect combination, and a long-term project after the COVID. Uh, thank you so much. Someone said to me that the time is over because the, the discussion was uh, was uh, so long and was very interesting. Many thank you for your participation. It was uh, has been a, a fantastic discussion with the different views, but in the same way. And then to solve the problem. And it is very important. Thank you so much. And bye-bye to you. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you, Antonio. Mm. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.